everyone, back out here in Alaska, one of my favorite places to be. I'll be out here for just under two weeks, spending a whole lot of time with a whole lot of bears. This is a beautiful landscape, literally covered with bears everywhere. I'm so excited to be back out here. These trips, there is a lot of work that goes into these extended trips. The preparing, the planning, figuring out the logistics of how to get out here and how to get back to civilization, the gear that you bring, staying safe in bear country, a whole lot goes into these trips and I'm going to try to cover as much of that as I possibly can. An extended trip like this can be an experience that you'll never forget and hopefully that's a positive experience and not a negative one. So in this video I want to give you as much information as I possibly can to make sure any trip that you're planning ends up being a positive one and not a negative one. So follow along as we cover as much information as we possibly can to help you have an awesome experience out in nature. So let's start off by talking about how to figure out where you're going to go and how to get there. So I've actually already got a video where I describe how I personally decide where to go to explore, how I find the species that I do to photograph. Uh, so just for a time thing, not to repeat that whole video, if that's something you're interested in finding out, go check the uh, link in the description below and you can watch that video. I'll also have a card that pops out that you can watch that video with uh, if you want to see how I personally figure out where I go to photograph animals. Once you've figured out where you want to go, you need to figure out how you're going to get there. So this location, for instance, is one that is not accessible by car. So in order for me to get out here, I had to be dropped off by a bush plane. So what I did after choosing a location that I wanted to go to, I figured out which cities and towns were nearest to this area that had bush plane pilots. I chose a pilot and arranged with him a time and a date for him to drop me off out here. And then I arranged with him a time and a date for him to pick me up out here. Now, plans can change on a trip like this depending on whether, uh, if a bush plane pilot can even get back in to pick you up. Uh, all that stuff can change. So I'll go into that a little bit more on changing conditions and how to figure that out if you do need to change something during your trip. I'll go into that a little bit more uh, later on in this video. So let's jump into some of the gear that you're gonna have to bring and plan for on a trip like this. You know, this isn't just a quick overnighter where you can bring a sandwich for dinner and granola bar for breakfast the next morning. There's a lot of food prep that goes into a trip like this. There's a lot of additional gear that you need to bring, a lot of camera gear. There's a lot of bear safety gear that you need to bring. So let's dive into all of that and hopefully this will be information that helps you in planning for a similar trip. Let's talk for a minute about food. Food is obviously something you're going to need on every trip, whether it's an overnight trip or a longer trip like this one. You're gonna need to eat, you're gonna need food. All of the food that I have on my trips, I prepare beforehand at home. I love cooking, so I'll cook my own meals and then I dehydrate my meals and I can bring them with me and uh, eat pretty well on all of my trips. There's some great options that you can, uh, that you have available for bringing food with you on trips. You can dehydrate meals like I do, or you can freeze dry meals, things like that. Uh, both are great ways to uh, prepare food beforehand and bring them with you on a trip. This is called a bear vault. I'll uh, put a link to it in the description below. I love this thing, I've used it for years now. It's a bear proof container with locks on the lid so they can't open the lid. Super durable plastic that they can't, you know, break or force open. And I can keep two weeks of food in this container here. You can see how small this container is and I've got two weeks of food in here. Plus some additional meals just in case I were to get stranded out here for a few extra days or something. In an area like this, 
where there are no trees, I can't hang a bear bag, so a container like this is essential. Uh, in an area where there's trees, different things like that, generally you can hang a bear bag. Check the regulations for the area you're traveling through. Some areas still require some sort of bear container rather than a bear bag. What I'm trying to get across is you're gonna need some sort of container, bear-proof container, to put your food, any scented items, your toiletries, all that stuff, and then you keep the container out, out and away from your tent. Uh, the goal is to not have any scented items, any food or anything like that in your tent. Bears smell incredibly well. Uh, their sense of smell is much more powerful than even a bloodhound. So they'll be able to pick up even the littlest scent. So anything you can do to make sure your tent, your area doesn't smell like food or you know deodorants different toiletries things like that that might attract a bear uh, you're going to want to take those measures to make sure that your camp is safe and that you're safe in your tent you're not attracting the bears to your your area another side note if you're cooking food uh, actually cooking where you're going to have smells and stuff emitting from you know what you're cooking it's a very good idea to have a separate change of clothes as well uh, because those scents will stick to your clothes and then if you then go into your camp or your tent with those clothes, bears are gonna be attracted to your tent still. So the method of cooking that I do where it's all dehydrated, I'm not actually cooking, I don't have those smells coming up and sticking to my clothes. Uh, I don't personally have a separate change of cook clothes, but that is a good idea, something that you'll wanna consider if you do a lot of cooking, actual cooking, and then those clothes you will need to keep with your other scented items and your food items and whatnot. So some very simple things that I bring with me on a trip like this, or anytime I go out into inclement weather, anytime I'm expecting moisture rain, uh, are camera covers. So for instance, I've got this waterproof camera cover on my camera and my lens right now. So even though I've been out in the rain for the past six hours, my camera and my lens are dry. The covers got drenched, they got soaked, but I was able to take pictures in the rain while keeping my gear safe. Moisture can be a killer for cameras and camera gear. So you wanna take the correct measures to keep your gear safe, keep it dry. And uh, even if you've got a cover on your equipment while you're out, Make sure you're checking to make sure there's no leaks or anything. So I'm going to take this all off, check my camera, make sure it's dry. If there is any moisture on it, I'm going to dry it off and uh, just make sure everything's good. I'm going to make sure the glass on the front of the lens is clean, free of moisture, so there's not moisture just sitting on there. Uh, something very simple that you can do, but very effective to keep your gear safe. Uh, you invest a lot into camera gear and uh, you want to you wanna do all that you can to keep it safe. Another thing that's very simple is a backpack cover. This is my backpack right here. Again, I've been out in the rain. You can see my backpack's completely dry underneath, even after six hours in the rain. A simple, you know, $15, $20 cover that you can put on your backpack to keep it dry. Something very simple for your, your camera gear. The next thing that I wanted to talk about for camera gear and maintaining your camera gear and equipment is a tool kit. Again, these are very simple things, but these are things that I have forgotten on trips before and I've run into times when I've needed them very much. My tripod's given me troubles today, one of the legs on it, so I'm going to fix it here in just a little bit and I'm able to do so because I have a, a camera tool kit on me. Some things that you can bring to keep yourself safe out in the field on a longer trip like this is uh, to make sure you bring appropriate clothing for weather. Again, these are very simple things, but without them, you can get yourself into danger very easily. Again, I was out in the rain for about six hours today so far, and I'll be going back out. Uh, the rain's kind of stopped now. It's probably going to pick up in a little bit, and I'll be going back out. 
but underneath this jacket and these pants, I am completely dry. This jacket and these pants are made from waterproof material, so even though I was just being dumped on earlier today, I'm completely dry and warm underneath. I've got thermal layers underneath, so I'm actually quite warm. And uh, even though it's chilly outside, uh, I'm very warm and I'm dry underneath. Very important that you keep yourself dry on longer trips. When all you have to come back to is your tent, at the end of the day, if you're not dry, if you're cold and you're wet, and you crawl in your sleeping bag, your b sleeping bag's going to go wet, and you won't be able to warm up, and that could lead to, to bigger issues. Some other items that I bring with me to uh, keep myself safe on a trip like this are a map and compass that I can use in case I were to get lost or if I needed to move to a different area and let my uh, bush plane pilot know where to pick me up at a specified time, I can let him know exactly where I am and I can meet him there for pickup. Communication on a longer trip like this is vital. Uh, there's some items that you can bring with you that allow you to communicate with family or with a third party, even if you're outside of cell phone reception. The item that I bring on my trips is a satellite phone. Uh, this is an Iridium satellite phone. I'll put a link to it down in the description below if you're interested in looking at it. Satellite phones can get pretty pricey and the minutes for them can be uh, somewhat costly as well. But I cannot express how grateful I am for this device. The ability to call home each day and check in with my family is priceless uh, to be able to have the peace of mind for them and for me knowing that they're safe and that I'm safe is wonderful. Uh, being able to contact my pilot that drops me off and picks me up from these uh, remote locations is vital as well. Uh, if weather comes in and the pilot's unable to fly in, they can contact me and let me know when they'll pick me up, uh, what the updated time and date are. Or if there's some sort of an emergency and I need to contact them, I can do so. Uh, there's other options as well, aside from satellite phones. There are devices that connect directly to your cell phone and allow you to uh, text from your cell phone via satellite to whatever party you need to. Or uh, there's devices that you don't need to use your cell phone with and you can text directly from that device. A lot of those devices allow you to download maps, get weather reports, uh, send a SOS distress call, different things like that. Uh, it's very, very vital uh, that you let people know exactly where you're going to be and at what time. Uh, all these things put together will help ensure that you have a very safe trip in remote areas in the backcountry. So, I'm here in Alaska, camped in this little thicket of trees. Thought I'd shoot a video so I can remember this place. Let's uh, take you back to my tent. So, my first night here, I was camped a little bit more in the open. And, uh, Woke up in the morning, I, it was a little bit windy. Woke up, thought the branch had fallen on my tent because I, I uh, heard something scrape against it. And then a second later, I see this massive bear paw scratch at it again. I ripped, ripped the bottom of my tent open. So I moved my campsite and uh, found this little pretty dense tree cover back there, this little opening. Um, <laughs> made this little makeshift fence partly out of the tree. And 
some other branches that I found. So obviously this fence, if a grizzly wants to get through it, it's gonna get through, but at least I can hear it getting through. Um, so I can know that something's there and um, keeps it a little bit more hidden during the day. Let's talk for a little bit about bear safety. I want to review a couple of items that you can bring with you. You should be bringing with you anytime you're in bear country, especially in an area like this with the landscape literally covered in brown bears. Uh, first item that I wanted to talk about is called a bear fence. Uh, this is a bear fence here. It surrounds my whole camp, my tent. And essentially what it is, is a series of three hot wires that you string around poles around your camp. And they're powered by a battery powered uh, energizer here. And it just runs a small electric current through these wires and the bears can sense that and it deters them. It's a uh, precaution that you can take with you and uh, something in an area like this that you should be taking with you. As a photographer, I leave my camp for the majority of the day and I can't even describe the peace of mind that comes from being able to leave my camp and know that uh, it's safe within this area and I can come back at the end of the day uh, without bears getting into my tent, anything like that. The next item that I wanted to talk about is bear spray. Uh, this is a very common item, uh, one that I hike with quite frequently. Anytime I'm in bear country, I hike with this. I've never needed to use it. Most people haven't, but it's an item that you can and should be bringing with you anytime you're in bear country to uh, help deter a bear if you were to be charged or in a threatening situation. This is an item that you should be hiking with in a very easily accessible spot. Uh, a place that you can grab it very easily in case you were to have an encounter with an aggressive bear uh, or a surprised or startled bear. Uh, something that you can grab very easily. You pop the clip off and uh, you you spray with the trigger there. Make sure you know how this works in case you ever need to use it. Again, I have never needed to use bear spray in all the time that I've spent around bears, but it does give me some peace of mind going out with it, knowing that it's right there on my backpack or on my belt or wherever I'm keeping it, and I can grab it and I can use it in case I need to. These are both very important items to bring into bear country, uh, but one of the most important things that you can bring when spending time around bears is education. Knowing how to act and behave around bears and knowing what to look for in their behavior is vital anytime you're spending uh, time observing or photographing bears, especially when you're doing so solo and not as part of a group. Bears get very bold and curious with individuals much more than they do so with groups of people. So as I come into bear country, uh, I look for certain cues, certain behavior that then clue me into whether or not I should stick around that bear or if I can go find another bear at that point. There are certain things you can look for in a bear's behavior that will help you know if he's starting to feel anxious or agitated, uh, if he's about to get aggressive. There are certain things you can watch for, certain scenarios you know not to put yourself in uh, that can help keep you safe and help keep that animal safe. Before I ever came on a trip like this, I spent a lot of time researching bear behavior, the signs of what to look for to uh, know if a bear was starting to become uncomfortable or agitated. I spent a lot of time watching bears from a distance to see those behaviors firsthand and to uh, see what I needed to recognize spending time around bears. I felt like going into trips like this, I was very well uh, prepared in that regard. But what I wasn't prepared for was gear. Uh, as I showed you at the beginning of this video, I had a scenario that I was in that could have ended very badly for me. 
I was in my tent without a bear fence around. I wasn't counting on the curiosity of the bears in that area. Most of the bears that I spend time with are very apprehensive around people and anything human related. So when they see tents, they take off. They don't, they don't like knowing that there are people in that area. But it just so happened that this had been a new area for me. I didn't know how curious the bears were and I woke up very suddenly to a large brown bear entering my tent. That scenario could have ended very badly for me and for the bear. Uh, waking up to having a large brown bear entering my tent was intense. I can tell you from personal experience that was one of the most intense experiences I have ever had in my life and that scenario could have ended very poorly for me and again for that bear. If something were to happen to me, uh, a lot of times if there's an altercation between humans and bears, unfortunately that bear is then put down. And I would hate to be the reason that a bear would have to die or be euthanized uh, because of my lack of uh, experience or knowledge. Before you ever go on a trip like this, please do as much research as possible. Try smaller trips first. Make sure you feel comfortable going on a trip like this. If you're at all uncomfortable or have any doubts or anything like that, Bring somebody else with you that might be a little bit more experienced. Make sure you bring all the appropriate gear with you. Even if you don't think you're gonna need it, it's better to be safe than to put yourself in a potentially dangerous scenario like I did. Going on an extended trip like this can be an experience of a lifetime. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, it should be a positive experience and not a negative one. A lot of that comes down to the gear you bring the knowledge that you know going into a trip like this, the communication, all these things that we've talked about during this video contribute to making your experience worthwhile and positive. If you have any specific questions for me, please let me know. I've tried to cover everything that I could think of, but obviously there may have been something that I missed. So if you've got any additional tips, let us know in the comments. I love learning from you guys, as I've mentioned previously. The other viewers love learning from your comments as well. So if there's something I've missed, please let me know in the comments below. And again, if you've got specific questions for me, I'd love to hear them. I try to get back to every question I get and uh, hopefully, you know, we can learn from each other. Thank you so much for following along. I love it out here and I'm having a great trip. I feel comfortable, I feel safe out here and I'm able to communicate with my family and with third parties. I feel adequately prepared and hopefully if you do a trip like this, you can be too. Thanks again guys and we'll see you. We'll see you next week.